Reveal the World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 628 What Jamjar Saw Starlight sat in a reading chair in the Immortal Dreams library, all alone. Thoughts of her strange duplicate ran over and over through her head, but the most important question held no answers. Was Glimmer a part of her, or something else? She could be insane. After all the things she had been through, many ponies could easily have cracked, turning to delusions as a mental safeguard against the realities of their lives. And she was just a filly. Living a normal life might have been something she gave up on long, long ago, but she knew what normal looked like. Normal foals had parents who looked out for them and protected them from the unfairness of the world. She didn't blame Maple even a little, but the fact was she had taken and dealt with and stayed standing through more than enough to break an adult, all while she should have been nurtured and growing. It wasn't fair. Quietly she sighed, wondering if her old family in Equestria deserved any blame instead. Or Glimmer could be a magical entity from somewhere else. Where else didn't matter, and there were far too many possibilities to even narrow things down. The important part was whether she was only talking to the thoughts in her own head, or whether Glimmer could know things she didn't and have an agenda of her own. Was she Starlight's conscience, advising her by her own understanding of her situation for better or for worse? Or did she want something? Having spent her life trekking or being dragged across continents by the consequences of others' whims, Starlight wouldn't have been surprised by anything. I'm home, Jim Jarza's voice interrupted behind her, and she spun in the chair to see a sodden, triumphant filly draining rivulets onto the floor. Starlight raised an eyebrow. You need a towel. Yeah, Jim Jarza closed her eyes, stuck out her neck, and shook like a dog, spraying the walls with satisfaction. Yeah, I'm good. So, how did things go with Chauncey? As insane as I predicted. Speaking of insanity, uh, Starlight nodded inside. He made no sense and had no point to everything he was doing. He showed us he's under the effects of Moonglass and was very stubborn about not fighting or hurting us while we were down there. But he also took responsibility for all the evil things, like making Stanza and creating those foals, and didn't even seem to understand it was wrong. I think it's all just a moon glass. It's making him very lonely, but without a conscience at all. Wow, good for him. Jamesworth curled her lip. So we're completely free? Not in any trouble from his Valdi whatsoever? I don't think so, Starlight muttered. We also didn't stop them from doing anything bad, though we did get Valet's sister's body back, but Chauncey refused to fight us even when Valet tried to punch him. I think we're actually safe for once. Jim just gave her a look, then huffed. Well, boo, guess I did all that digging for nothing. She pouted for a moment, then brought back her sharkish grin. But I did find things. Percival having an affair? That's old school. I got us the best blackmail ever. Starlight raised an eyebrow. Is Valdi Sphinx? James George wandered closer, whispering with her muzzle right against Starlight's ear. The one who's been dying of old age and is on life support deep in their hospital? He actually died a long time ago and they haven't told anyone. That means Is Valdi doesn't have a Sphinx, so Percival shouldn't get to rule anymore. They should be taken over by that gazelle, so if we ever need a friend, we just tell Percival we can spill this secret. Starlight actually stiffened. Then he'll have to keep us quiet so he doesn't lose his province. Uh, she gave James Rudd a weary look. Are you sure he won't try to keep us quiet some other way? Him loving a mare is one thing, but this feels big enough he'd try to retaliate with an even bigger threat. Mutually assured destruction, James Rudd's grand. All we have to do is set up someone else who's trustworthy and not in Esvaldi, and tell them if anything happens to us here, spill it to Meltdown. Get her to raid this hospital and have a look for herself. Ooh, that'll go so badly for Chauncey. But it will also go badly for us, Starlight protested. Just please try not to antagonize anyone for now. I think we're actually safe for once, and 
Uh, she looked away. Now that we've found a conspiracy without being drawn in, we don't have to do anything hasty. I think everything's stable right now. It's not like Iron Ridge with the dam, so we can take our time and be careful. Oh, that's perfectly fine, Jemjot assured her. I'm not playing a card like this until I really need to, and we do still know about the affair anyway. Although, uh, she stepped back, putting a hoof on her chin. Now that I think about it, I've got a contact with that Kiro from trying to bail Valet out in the tournament, and I also really hate him for what he did with the foals in Ironwish, even if Chauncey was paying him to do it. I wonder if I could plant this secret in a way that makes him take the fall. She started giggling to herself as she planned, grin growing wider. Jam jars, don't be evil, Starlight Side. Can we please just leave things alone right now? I don't think Chauncey will retaliate if we talk to him or ask him things, but let's not touch anything else, please. Uh, Jam jars drooped. Yeah, fine, whatever. Look, I need to go dry off and warm up, okay? Drop by my room if you want to come hang out or something. Starlight watched as she left, studying the way Jamjars moved. Even soaked, with her coat matted against her skin, her step was confident. Was she satisfied in a job well done? Did she walk like that normally, or did she know Starlight was watching and felt she had an image to keep up? Perhaps she even just hoped anyone was watching. A small spike pricked at Starlight's heart. Here she was, thinking about Chauncey, considering him a pitiful creature who couldn't understand how his foul deeds pushed away the ponies he tried to care about and made him alone. Melia, Serena, she vaguely remembered hearing about a relative he had working in Percival's mansion he was on bad terms with too. And she was thinking about herself, left to find her way through continent after continent to the point where she wondered if she was going insane. And then there was Jam Jars, a weird, uncomfortable little filly with no upbringing whatsoever, who was rude and tense and always talked about things that made her feel awkward. Starlight had her friends. She had spent the night in a cuddly pile with Maple, Amber, and Valet. Jam Jars had her posters. It would hurt to be a hypocrite. In fact, the more she thought about it, the more it hurt already. Feeling vaguely like her body was moving on its own, Starlight got up, lit her horn, floated a book out from the shelves. That book, since Glimmer had basically told her it was important, and trotted off down the hallway after her fellow filly. When she got there, the door was closed, so she knocked. Huh? echoed from within. It's me, Starlight said, as the door floated open in Jam Jars' telekinetic low. Inside, Jam Jars was on the floor, toweling herself off, and a look of surprise at Starlight's presence lasted just long enough for Starlight to see before it was gone, replaced by the usual smug self-satisfaction. You invited me over, Starlight shrugged, stepping inside and getting the door behind her, already feeling awkward in Jam Jars' room. So, hi. Ha! Huh, why wasn't you to actually come? Jam Jars grinned, rolling around with a mess of towels. So, how yourself? Starlight waited for a suggestion of what to actually do, eventually realizing Jam Jars either had nothing to offer or was smart enough not to talk about her posters. I brought a book, if you want to read something. She tilted her head, floating up Sousa the Explorer's journal. In Equestria, my best friend and I used to hang out by reading together all the time. What's that? Jam Jars squinted at the text. It looks ancient. It is. I found it in the mountains. Starlight shrugged again, moving to sit on Jam Jars' bed. She might have been willing to spend time with the filly, but she wasn't feeling altruistic enough to warn her that this was the most boring book in the world. I think it's mostly poetry, but I haven't read it for a while. Jam Jars hopped up next to her damp coat, pressing probably deliberately into Starlight's. Ancient poetry? Sounds weird. Is that really where your tastes are? She frowned. Well, to each their own. But look, if I read this, you get to read some of my favorites with me. Starlight winced internally, but she wasn't about to admit she was offering Jam Jars a terrible book to read. It's not for fun. 
I heard somewhere that there's something important in it I need to figure out. I think. Maybe. At that, Jamjar seemed a lot more understanding. Oh! I read textbooks too. It's how I learned my friction spell. Speaking of which, I need to decide what to focus on next. She tapped her hooves. I'm still showing you some of my favorites. I have them in a drawer in that cabinet. You have books? Stolid frowned. More than just the ones in Shinesbox Library? Well, of course. Jamjot shrugged. Camouflage spell, remember? And I'm good at stalling my mane. Easiest pie to go to the public libraries and Stormhofer's Valdi, look like a different filly every time, and open a million accounts to keep all the books I like without getting fined. A stolid frowned. That's technically stealing. Oh, you'd steal them too if you saw how good these books were, Jam George said with a grin. And come on, you should be interested by my magic. I bet you don't have a spell that can do that. Wait a minute. Starlight's eyes slowly focused. Your color change lets you look like normal ponies too? Not just background objects? Yeah, why? Jam Jar is momentarily concentrated, turning her raspberry mane blue. It's pretty useful when you're creative. Starlight hesitated. Can you look like me? Jam Jar's hauled herself back to her hooves. Give me a moment with my mane, she requested, walking over to her vanity. Yours is a little longer than mine and way too scruffy even with that ponytail. It would be easier if you got a mane cut. Have you ever thought about how you'd look with a proper bang? She shifted the colors in her mane as she worked, straightening and messing and continuing to dry it. Ah, it's just a little too short. Eventually she sighed, giving herself one last flicker of magic and turning to face Starlight. What do you think? Starlight blinked. Gem jars were still wet and the main style was a little different and her eyes were orange and her horns slightly shorter, but... Wow, that's interesting. How am I? Gem jars turned back and forth regarding herself. Our body proportions are pretty much identical, right? Yeah, I think I measured us before. You're a sound sleeper sometimes. Ha, huh, this is actually a good idea. You like it? Starlight just watched her for a moment. Except for the horn and eyes, but yes. Huh. Jam just frowned. Eyes are easy enough to fix with contacts. We even sell a ton of those in Isvaldi already. Firefly Sisters merch, remember? She kicked open a drawer and pulled out a box. I'd have to get some to make sure they match your shade if... Wait, are you thinking of doing anything with this? Maybe? I was just curious. Still, I shrugged. Well, now I'm curious, James Charles informed her, walking up and putting her hooves on Starlight's shoulders. Hmm, eyes we can fix. Mean, you're getting a main cut. You need one anyway. We can cut ours identically and then style them differently so they're easy to interchange. And I have been having my horn growth spurred over the last few months, so maybe they'll eventually be closer. In the meantime, we could get a cone as long as I don't have to actively cast while I'm disguised. Hmm. Starlight's eyes widened slightly. Are you actually planning to do something with this? Nope, Jim just chirped. It's just for fun. And maybe I'll plan something later, but you gotta admit, it's cool, right? Yeah, Starlight wasn't sure. All she could think about was getting yet another duplicate. Useful, annoying, or insanity. It would take some thinking to figure out how she felt about this, for sure. End of chapter 628